everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, hello and welcome. Uh, I'm uh, Cleo House, your host, and this is the Artist Talk with DJ Smith and Jewel McGee for I'm in danger when you think I'm dangerous. Uh, check, check this out in person at the Book House and the gallery online, as well as uh, their Facebook page for more information. Uh, Cleo, would you mind introducing yourself just a little bit? Sure. Uh, as I said, I'm Cleo House. Uh, I'm the director of the School of Theater at Stephen F. Austin State University down in Texas, uh, kind of somewhere between Houston and Dallas in a little town called Nacogdoches. Uh, as my research area, I'm really happy to be here to talk with you all about your artwork tonight. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. My, my pleasure. So, uh, next, we're going to have uh, Amber Johnson discuss uh, I would say just okay. a little bit. I met Amber um, a few years ago when we were both doing a show at the Regional Arts Commission. Um, okay. I was doing a show, uh, I was doing a piece on um, a waterfall about the way that history, sometimes we write and hear history in different ways and the history that's told doesn't actually reflect what we experience. And that show opened um, on another night when there was a bunch of stuff happening in St. Louis. Um, so we've been we've been together for a little while, and it's been fun to get to know Amber and Justice League. Oh, I was asking you to uh, tell us about uh, ju the Justice League. Give us a, the people who may not know anything about it. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, so I think Joel was saying we met at uh, RAC at Evoke where we had just started the Justice Fleet. So um, the Justice Fleet is a mobile social justice museum and we use the word museum loosely. Um, to me, a museum is any place that houses art that speaks to people. It doesn't have to be, you know, brick and mortar or pretentious. Um, so a lot of people are like, this isn't a museum. I'm like, oh, but it is, wait till you start painting. <laughs> um, so it's a mobile social justice museum that fosters healing through art dialogue and play. And our goal is to bring healing arts and play therapy into communities that are normally not served by museums. Um, and so we have Radical Forgiveness, which asks people to either talk about the ways they've been biased towards others and seek forgiveness, or to talk about how others have harmed them and give forgiveness. Um, Radical Imagination, we have a box of toys where we ask people to build the just communities that they would want to live in by way of helping us find solutions to systemic injustice. Um, and then we've supported a few um, artists locally who just have ideas kind of like DJ did um, and wanted to do something around um, just danger and blackness and, and anti-blackness in the world. Um, so we're super duper excited uh, to, to help with this whole project um, and to be here to talk about and celebrate what, what DJ and Jewel accomplished.
I uh, was able to take a look at, at this uh, work and the process before. Uh, thank you, Joel, for sending, sending, it, sending it to me. And so I did come up with uh, some questions that I would like to talk to you all about uh, this process that you went through. So first of all, uh, I guess I'll start with DJ or, or either Joel, you could take it too. Uh, what was the inspiration for this project? Uh, well, the inspiration for this project was probably the inspiration of letting, like, of knowing that Black lives are not being acknowledged as lives and wanting to show that Black lives matter and to show that they are not criminals and they are human beings just like others. Do you like to add to that? Yeah. Um, for me, uh, it has been a strange time to, to do community art. Um, community art is what I usually do in collaborative and installation and, and so, and also art that's related to justice in, in communities. And so I was really wanting to do something as I felt this just wave of um, injustice happening in the, in um, starting with, I mean, George Floyd's death in particular was um, a, an area and Brown Taylor and all of these things that were happening this summer as we were all isolated. Um, and it felt more and more like I can't, I can't stay isolated about this thing. I need to be doing something in community and I just couldn't get my hands on what that could be. And then I was talking with Aunt Louise, DJ's um, mom, about stuff. And I said, do you think DJ might be interested in doing an art project with me? And so that was when, um, what, when we kind of started working together and figuring out, well, what could we do? What would we want to say? Um, how could we do it? Um, and so, yeah, I would say those are, those are pieces. OK. And when did the, the title come into play? How did, how did, at what point in the process did the title come? That's a great question. Uh, do you remember? Um, I think it was when we were going to choose a title. Um, I think what I was kind of seeing this perspective from was like, sort of like an overview of a narrator. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. what were the, sorry, go ahead, I don't interrupt, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that part of what I wanted um, DJ as an emerging artist, kind of learning how to do this thing a little bit more, I was asking DJ, <laughs> who is your audience? Who do you want to see this piece? Who do you wanna be changed by this piece? Okay. I was trying to say like, what is the, the nugget? You know, like what's that really important little bit at the middle that you wanna make mm -hmm. sure that people really get? And so we, right. I had, I think, a dozen different titles or kind of bits of titles and I started saying now which of these sounds good which of these is close and then we got closer and closer and closer until we found it. I'm always hesitant to, to ask artists uh, what does it mean you know what do, what do things mean and feel free to tell me it is what it is or whatever but I, I you know I'm gonna ask some of those kind of questions so uh, can you talk to me about the maze uh, and what, and I, I think I know, but I'm curious to hear what you, what, you, what you, the intention was in terms of what is the destination that we're headed to in the maze or if there is a, is a destination at all, what, what was the idea behind that? Um, well, the destination of the maze is for there to be happiness throughout all races well yeah mm -hmm. and there's two ways through the maze there's one way which is the harder way and there's the other way that is easy mm -hmm. can you describe the harder way what's the difference between the harder way and the easy way the harder way goes uh through danger it goes through the word and so it 
it just kind of goes through the word as you are feeling danger, dangerous. Yeah, we, the maze came really, really early in our conversations, in our talks. Um, as I was talking to DJ, I said, you know, what does it feel like to be you right now? What does it feel like to feel like you're constantly in danger? And he talked about going around corners and feeling like he wasn't sure what he was going to encounter. Um, things they're really hard and scary like the you know the unexpected shootings that were happening for no reason and the political situation um and some other things which uh, are on on those white index cards was one of the things there yeah there were yeah, yeah there were, so dj i am really curious to hear from you as a you know as a young uh, you know, black child, how clearly what was going on inspired you, you needed to, you know, get it out in some way. But can you just talk to me about what you were seeing in the news and how it was affecting you? Uh, what, what your thoughts about what you were seeing? Was there any particular thing you saw that, that made you go, okay, oh my goodness, I need to do something or uh, act out in some way, uh, if anything? Uh, well, I was seeing injustice and seeing sort of not quite healed from slavery times and still not quite understanding what the whole Black Lives Matter protest uh, campaign is about through specifically uh, white people, but non-specifically different races. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how long ago did you all finish this work? Because I'm wondering, you know, for me, I don't know about you as artists, uh, after I, I complete something, uh, the, the more time passes, I guess the less my emotional connection is to it. So I'm curious, how long ago did you finish the piece and how, how attached are you to it still? Or what is it, how does it resonate for you as artists right now? I think it was done about a week or two. Uh, it was done a week or two. Oh. And well, I think you, you stopped working on it more, more than I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After we finished putting all of the, the color on it, then I had to shellac it or uh, lack yeah. it so that it could go outside. Um, oh. There's a little bit more process there. So I've been just putting layers and layers of, of goo over it for another week. Um, and then I, I installed it a couple days ago and I got the, the, the paper that says what it is on there today. So oh, okay. I'm still very much in it. <laughs> we, took the, we took the photos by the uh, art uh, just yesterday. Yeah, yesterday we my were. My dad and Jules' dad, my grandpa did. Yeah. Can you talk about the collaboration, both of you, in terms of, you know, because as artists, there's always this kind of um, give and take of ideas, right? Uh, one person, you know, sensitive artists are careful to not take over and to hear, but there's also compromises that have to be made. Uh, was there anything you described the process of working together on this? Uh, well, I just kind of really wanted for my voice to just be extended and to let other people know how I feel. But also I wanted, I want my aunt Jewel to kind of become more popular as an artist. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. I, it was a great collaboration. I've <laughs> worked with many artists. Um, I do a lot of collaboration and it was one of the easier collaborations, um, to be honest. We, every time I asked DJ to have something for me, 
he had it for me by the time that I wanted it. And I realize that feels like a low bar, but that is not a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> it is really hard to get people to do the things that you you're asking so we would come together and i'd say you have four sketches i'll have four sketches and we would both have them we'd bring them together and we'd say okay what what of this feels like it's really good what of this feels like it's not quite on um mm -hmm. we started with some imaging i just went onto pinterest and i grabbed like all of these pictures that felt like is, is this close and then dj went and and circled the various ones and said this is close this is close this is close and so then we kind of started steering towards the same direction um i would say that the thing maybe that got um complicated as we were moving through all of this we talked about um the maze and danger and even the title i'm in danger when you think i'm dangerous and um i i i sat this line where I wanted to create this piece that would express the experience that DJ was having of being in danger. But as an aunt, I didn't want DJ to be in danger. And I didn't mm. want him to believe that that was the only choice. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that it is very powerful when we create things. And I wanted to make sure that in this creation, I was also guiding him to a way through this that didn't include being stuck in the middle of it. So I think that that um, right. shaped some of the, the collaboration a little bit at some point. And then when we were making the maze, I also felt like I don't want DJ to have to live in this space for as long as it's going to take to do this. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the actual execution mm -hmm. of the main piece that DJ did was in the top because I wanted him to be living and breathing and making that space for himself as well. So when you guys kind of, you kind of uh, talked to it, to this a little bit just now, how do how did you have those conversations around race and DJ, how comfortable were you with expressing the fears and anxieties that seeing the injustice that we see in the media brings out in your yourself as a black person How, did you feel like you were able to uh to talk about that uh, in this process in the way that you needed to to express yourself uh, I hope that question made sense <laughs> Oh, go ahead, go ahead. It, yes and no. It was kind of meeting halfway in the middle. It was more towards yes than no. But I think if I had to go with my honest opinion, I would go with yes. So can you, can you talk to me about the ways in, that it was yes, and then maybe a, one way in which it was a no? Well, uh, the ways it was a yes is that I kind of got attention of friends and family and some people that I don't even know that my mom might know and kind of letting them broadcast it and teachers at the middle school broadcast it to their friends and family mm -hmm. and sort of letting it kind of disperse like a leaf, uh, a tree disperses its offspring. Mm. Mm. Nice. And the ways in which was a, a no? Uh, there's only really one way is because, because I kind of didn't really like the way that the if I had more time to work on the spray painting, I would take more time. And it was just kind of hard to mm -hmm. do the spray painting. Yeah. And we as artists, oftentimes we never feel we have enough, enough time. Jewel, I kind of will ask you the same question, but in a different way in terms of what, 
what what um did you feel the weight or any or responsibility as a white person working on this project uh you know with your nephew uh because i cuz in in preparation for this uh discussion you know i was doing some research and i i came across one article where uh a reviewer was saying something to the effect that uh they felt that white people shouldn't depict black struggles but only um interrogate uh the ways in which white people have benefited from institutional racism and the historical discrimination and things like that how uh did you feel the weight of that or the or were you thinking about any of that in terms of for uh, audience perception uh as you two were preparing for this work yeah absolutely um i i feel like it took me a long time what feels to me and you know like a long time from the beginning of when i felt like this is a thing that we need to talk about as a society i need to do art about this and I kept waiting to figure out how can I do art about this? How can I do this in a way that doesn't add more harm or um, oppression or, you know, white splaining mm -hmm. <laughs> to this issue? And when I was talking to DJ, one of the things that we talked about, I know we talked a little bit about audience before. And I said, who do you want to see this? And he said, it's, it's my friend's parents, especially my white friend's parents. And I thought, aha, I'm one half of this bridge, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm the, my, my friends and people that look like me are a part of who DJ wants to see this. Right. So we can collaborate together because uh, we need to collaborate together. But again, it's a big deal for me to do this piece and to, to say that I, I have something to say. Um, right. I, I recognize um, that this is definitely a humble position that, that I need to occupy in order to do this with integrity. Um, mm -hmm. And part of what I, I wanted to do to make sure that this piece wasn't just from my little petty project to show that, that I have been virtuous in this particular time. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make sure that there was equity along all of the different um, spaces. I wanted to bring in as many um, friends and, and family that were not white to, to look at it and to say, am I on the right path? Am I, am I going here in the right place? Um, and I also wanted to make sure that financially, anything that was coming in for this project was going to be um, divided evenly. So there's, mm -hmm. there's no imbalance. DJ and I are getting paid the same amount for this project. That's um, great. So that was another way I wanted to create the equity. Great. So in, in talking about audience, uh, I think that was such a profound, when, when you first told me that, that was such a profound thing to, that you said, DJ, about, about the audience. Um, how, because the, I guess the piece has just been done, it hasn't been seen yet by a lot of people. Am I, I'm correct, right? It hasn't. Uh, what do you hope, DJ, what do you, what, that the audience leaves with at, when they see this work? What, what, what do you hope will happen? Uh, I was just hoping that they would get a better understanding of my perspective of life and sort of what it would be like to live in my shoes for a day. Jewel, what about you? What do you hope? I, I hope that we have um, a moment to think about what our thoughts do to other people. I think that especially um, talking to perhaps a more white audience, I think that we think that our thoughts are fine, no matter what they are, that our thoughts are somehow personal and that they can't make harm in the world. And I think one of the things that, about this piece that feels so powerful is that it's our thoughts about somebody else that can put them in real physical danger. And yet 
we want to also believe that our thoughts don't have to keep us in danger. You know, there's that interplay. I want, I want people to recognize how powerful our thoughts are and how real that danger is. But I also want DJ not to live in that space of danger, right? right? And I want all of the black boys and girls and kids in the world to believe that they can find a path through to safety and hope and belonging that doesn't have to journey through the danger maze that we've created of this world. Yeah, great. So to, to our audience, I just have a couple more questions, but I want to let you know that we're going to leave room for you to ask questions. And if you want to, we're asking that you put your questions in the chat. So while we're doing our last couple of questions here, uh, you'll have some time to put your questions in the chat and I will read read them uh, aloud. Okay, so a couple of more questions here. So I'm gonna lighten it up. DJ and Jewel, what do you like most about being an artist? Start with you, DJ. What do you like most about being an, an artist? Uh, well, it's not about the money for me. It's more about getting your perspective and how you feel out abroad. And also, it's kind of a little bit about, about the money of buying stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was telling DJ early on, I said, now listen, if you get paid to do art, that makes you a professional artist. Yes. So this is a professional artist over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, let's so make we'll... a thing about being an artist. Um, I love doing things that I have no idea how I'm going to do. Mm. I, I do this to myself all the time. I'm like, sure, I can do it. And then I get in, I'm like, how am I going to do this thing? Um, and I, I kind of do that to myself all the time. Uh, this particular project had quite a few of those moments where it was like, I have never done this before. Why did I think that I could do this? Making a maze is really hard. <laughs> I don't well, know. Yeah, when I saw you with that uh, that nail clip, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that was a little. That was like, "Wow!" But that th going from that journey from like, "I will never be able to do this," all the way to the other side of like, "Wow, look what I just did," um, is I would say what I love about about being an artist. Awesome. You kind of hit on my next question, which is. Uh, uh, although this project is born out of trauma, what has been the most rewarding part? What has brought out the most joy that you've gotten from this project? DJ? Getting the money to buy food. Nice. Whatever food I want. Nice. Well, I'm, taking into consider I'm taking into consideration to get a new gaming system. Ooh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, what was most fun? Gosh, I loved spray painting. I think you, you had some fun with that too, DJ, didn't you? We both um, kind of hit on this as we were talking about like, what would be in that place where there's freedom and joy and hope and belonging and trust? And we were like, paint everywhere. <laughs> so we started playing with spray paint and I, I don't think either of us got enough of it. We have boards and boards and boards and I, I love my spray paint now. I just want to go out and graffiti the world. I keep looking at train cars going, I just want to spray paint you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a question uh, here. Let's see. Question for DJ. Do you ever feel like others think you are like a gang member or anything just because you're black? Basically, it sounds like, do you ever feel like you are a victim of, of a lot of stereotypes because you're black? Um, yes and no, because, well, yes, because people sort of like, they have to be careful of what they say like when they're joking around with me and no because I kind of want to be that person like if it's a joke it's okay but if it's like sort of if it's a joke it's semi-okay but like it's not fully okay 
like if it's t directed towards a certain person or certain ethnicity, then I, I, I'm not going to be a part of that. It sounds like you got a good, good instincts there, my friend. If, if your gut is telling you that it's not okay, it's not okay. Uh, let's see, what's next? Would you like to know, we, we would like to know your favorite part of the piece. Caroline would like to know your favorite part of the piece. I guess that's um, for Jewel or DJ. Well, my favorite part of the piece is me standing down at the bottom <laughs> and I'm just dripping ooze. <laughs> Yeah, what is the what, what is the ooze? Yeah. Tell me what the ooze is about. What does that mean? Well, it just looks like sort of like skin and clothing. Okay, okay, all right. I yeah. kind of like that dripping thing with graffiti, where they just go across and then it the letters just drip. Okay, all right. Yeah, we were trying to figure out how are we going to make the top and the bottom feel like the whole piece feel like it's one piece, and uh. like three sections um, and we had hoped to collaborate with another artist photographer and we didn't raise enough funding to do that and so at the last minute we kind of had to like adjust so I was like all right well it looks like I'm going to draw DJ <laughs> that was one of the things where I was like I don't know if I can do this um, so one of the ways in which I uh, made it possible was by pulling into that abstract space. And mm -hmm. I was, that's exactly what I was gonna say before you even said it, DJ, the drips on that <laughs> portrait are just, I love them. Great. Let's see here. Forgive me. DJ, did you learn anything about yourself during this project? Uh, yes. What I learned about myself is that I don't really like to do work. <laughs> um, I like to do stuff with my hands, such as creating things with popsicle sticks, anything sort of wood, painting, spray painting, drawing. But the really thing that I really don't like to do is okay. relating to others like I like mm -hmm. to rather keep in a certain isolation of group of people. Yeah. I think that's an interesting question for you too, Jewel. Did you learn anything about yourself? Yeah, I would say I definitely learned things about myself. Um, I, I think one of the, the things that strikes me at this exact moment is um, that you can make things out of nothing. Um, I was feeling like in this isolation, how am I supposed to do art now? How am I supposed to share with the world? Um, and I don't have anybody who wants to host me. And I, I just made this whole opening and project and art and got the funding just out of nothing. And, mm. and I think that that reminds me how big the community can be if we just you know op open up a little bit um, and do a lot of hard work that is pretty exhausting um at some point but yeah so that's that's one thing i learned i think this covid thing is is hard and it's really hard to be in isolation especially when we're recognizing that we need to focus on community issues but in isolation and and i think we kind of hit on that own which goes back into that space of thoughts like the way i think as i sit by myself in my house isolated can't put other people at risk or can create safety for them. I yeah. hope that my thoughts, realizing that DJ is safe and trusting him and, and recognizing that I'm not in charge of the world and it's not my job to make decisions about other people in that way. Um, I think that's another thing that I kind of just am sitting and learning. Um, it's a continual kind of learning. Okay. A few more. Let's see. Uh, DJ, how have you seen yourself, your artwork, and yourself in your artwork grow? So have you seen yourself grow? Like, 
looking at who you were before, I'm going to interpret that. Looking at who you were before you started to the end of the project, have you changed? Have you grown as an artist? Yes, I have. I've grown to know that if you want to do get something done, you can't just sit around and post and tweet stuff about it. You have to actually do something about it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, let's see here. Jewel, do you hope to collaborate in the future uh, on this topic with others? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am particularly think that this topic and, and topics around um, racial issues in America and particularly in, in communities is something that is really hard. I mean, obviously we haven't sorted this out or anything. <laughs> it's really hard to deal with. And it's, it's a particularly hard for, I have noticed, for white people to want to hear about it and want to learn about it and want to change. And because of that, I find that art is something that pulls people in when otherwise the topic might push people away. So right. I think art does that, that juggling act that says, how do we think about hard things? How can we do that? And how can we connect to one another? Um, so I absolutely will continue to do art projects around the hardest things in our lives. Let's see. Okay, what's next? Will you two collaborate on other projects or extend this one? Uh, what's next? I'm going to take a really long nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to veg out, watch some TV, eat some popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, DJ? What you doing next? Um, kind of chill take a breather for a couple of weeks, then probably do another art project of uh, my own. Do you have any art. topics in mind that you're thinking about? Um, you don't have to say if you don't, you don't want to. I think I, yeah, I'm not going to say. Okay, no problem. I understand. <laughs> brain, though. I can see, like, you're like, well, maybe this, maybe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see, DJ, this is our last question. Have you been able to communicate what you wanted to communicate with this project? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of goes for both of us, but yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Great. That's a good what I really wanted to communicate was that people stereotype Black people and other races, such as other races as this certain group of peer people and that other sort of group of people. When actually we all kind of came from one humble beginning. Yeah. Joel, I take you take the same question. Yeah, I would say yes and no. I, I think absolutely I am proud of what this project communicates. I think that there's more that could be said and more art that could be made and more work that needs to be done. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was kind of thinking that also. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm really proud of what we did. Um, I'm proud of what we did together. I'm really proud of DJ. Um, and I, I think that it, it does a lot and it, it, it gets so, it does it, um, but it's, it's not done. We're not done yeah. with the work. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you guys have a, whole show here uh, that you could do or something, you know. Yes, well, and yeah. I'd like to mention that. We do have an online gallery that is open for a month. It is three-dimensional, but it is not physical. So it's great for isolation and COVID stuff and long distance. Um, it's in a lot of the, the communication that I've been sending out. I will certainly put it on my Facebook page, both at Artwork of Estral S. McGee and at the Justice Fleet. Um, and on my website as well. I will put my website onto the chat um, right now. Uh, I did want to say one more thing about what art we might do in the future, because one thing that we didn't maybe quite get to was um, including those dangers that were lurking in the maze. Yes, yes. And part of that was because as we got into it, 
there was so much we were trying to do with this small piece, <laughs> big small piece. Um, and I have another canvas that's just as big as the one that we did. I kind of want to put that maze, blow it up and put it on the whole thing, turn it sideways, giant, and put those lurking pieces in. Um, I would love to see that. Yeah. With that yeah, I feel like that yeah. would do another step of it um, that would, kind of, would, would be really powerful. So, you know, if, if we have funding, if we have time, if we have um, all of those kinds of things, then, then we might do more. Great. Right, I'm going to put this in the chat. So as we wrap up, is there anything that you two would like to say that, that, that hasn't been asked or um, anything you want to share with the people who are watching? Um, I'd like to say thank you to my Aunt Jewel, but also I'd like to say thank you to all of you for supporting me through this art project and through this sort of isolation time. Yeah, that's, thank you, DJ. Thank you for being such a good collaborative partner. Um, I'm not joking when I say you're one of the best um, collaborators I've ever worked with. Um, thank you so much for all of your hard work. And yeah, thank you to all of the folks who contributed there were some times, like I said, when I didn't know how I was gonna do whatever. And I remembered how many people were standing behind saying, I think that the thing you're doing is worth putting into the world. And that is huge. Um, and that's what I love about doing community, collaborative, mm -hmm. interactive art. Well, this has been great. Uh, I will say that you both are an inspiration, you know, and. Uh, DJ, you're going to be inspiring some young artists out there who's going to see this and think, if he can do it, I can do it too. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, your your work that you both did will have ripple effects and affect people that you may never meet. And that's, and that's what it's all about. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting. I really it's, appreciate that. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. So and I guess thank that's it. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you.